Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next session, which is going over the building and programming with the We Do uh, 2.0. And so for today, we have Michael Callahan. He is the founder of Rocket Science for Kids. He is a longtime reviewer for FLL Explorer and a head judge advisor for FL Challenge in North Texas. Michael, uh, Michael is also a Lego Education Certified Trainer and is actually featured in some of the Spike Prime videos on the Lego Education website. And we are happy to have him here with us today. And he's gonna share his screen and go through a PowerPoint presentation for us. So Michael, take it away. All right, we're gonna go through the building and programming with your WeDo kit. And I've heard a lot of great things from the panel on using the kit and programming with it. And I'll reiterate some of those as well. So on your, in your kit, you have your you have your WeDo box. So when you get your WeDo box, you'll have it set up and then you'll need to download the app to your computer and or tablet. And when you do so, my screen's running a little slow here. There we are. When you do get your WeDo set, you'll need to set it up with your stickers on the inside. So once you have that, that'll allow your teams to keep up with the elements, keep it sorted and keep you most efficient. When you have these set up on the side area, they'll know where pieces are to be and they'll know where to replace them back to. And I did hear of some coaches were sharing their sets as they pack it back up and they'll quarantine it and then send it to another member this will allow them to keep an eye on the pieces. And when you get it back as a coach to disinfect it or however you're doing that, you can do a quick quantity check as well. And there is a uh, top sheet inside of that that'll show you where things go as well. So at the bottom of your WeDo set are important elements and that's your hub and your wheels, which you wanna keep, keep, uh, keep an eye on and some of your other elements that are large, like your Lego separator, which a lot of would have. But one important thing you want to keep up with is your hub. If you have a rechargeable battery with that, you want to keep it charged and also have some AA batteries on the side for that. We've seen many times where teams will show up and they've been practicing all night or all day, or the hub is still turned on and they get there and it's blinking and like, why is the hub you know, not powered up? Also for your tablet, you wanna make sure your tablet is powered up and they're not like playing games on it while they're waiting and then they run your tablet uh, battery down. So those are really important items. To download your software, you would just need to go to the Lego Education site and go to WeDo and it would automatically select your system that you're downloading on, downloading on excuse me, whether it's a tablet or a computer and you would just go to your download and we'll just uh, set it up for you on your system. There'll be some software tips in that section as well. Oops, nope, don't wanna do that. I think I just went to the link. <laughs> See if I can get back out of that real quick. So that will be the link. Let me see if I can go back out of that one. Didn't mean to click the link. Not that, excuse me, technical difficulty there. And no, let me get that back. So while I'm getting that screen back here, there we are, sorry about that. So that is an active link. <laughs> and for your Explorer set, for Explorer set, if you haven't already, you wanna get your teams to build your Explorer set. It is the treadmill with the heart game. And it's really exciting when you build it, you have a cranking, you have a cranking mechanism on your part here that will actually raise the flag. And if you can see in the back part on my screen, there is the area where you would add the motor mechanism. The important part about the WeDo set and Explorer set is you want to add that mechanism for it to be coded and to be motorized. Very important. So when you're, when you're done setting up your item, setting up your set, 
you will build a structure. And as you can see, the it's for, it's Inspire models in the back and their WeDo model is set up right here on the side to, to run that challenge. The coding area is very important that your team members understand how to do the coding. I've seen many times as a reviewer where the students in a team are not really familiar with how to fix the code if there's a situation or even how to add additional elements onto it. So as a team, they would only need to have one WeDo set for that. But I've seen that some teams that have two, maybe three WeDo sets, but it gets complicated when they're coding or trying to figure out which model to move. So students will need to know the basics on their code palettes, what code palettes are doing and how they work, how to stop their code and manipulate it to do different things. If they're lighting it up, lighting the hub up or moving the code backwards or forwards, moving the motor backwards or forwards. So their model expectations would be for your playmakers. You need to show solutions to the challenge of finding new fun ways of places to get people moving and to help keep them healthy and strong. So we're about games and health and the treadmill is a good example of how that model works. You wanna show solutions to any other challenges that they've explored and everything has been made out of Lego elements, which is no surprise. You can use Lego minifigures, which I, I see plenty of. I've never seen a model with uh, just a few minifigures on it. And this one comes with a great one as well. And any Lego brick or other Lego elements, no glue, no paint or any other art supplies which be used on this model, mainly because this is a Lego challenge uh, set up on this part. Your poster or different elements, they don't have to be made totally out of Lego, but I have seen students add Lego to their posters and, and such. So you wanna include the treadmill Heart Game Explorer set with this, of course, and it needs to be uh, built like it is, but adding things around it so your reviewers will be able to, to spot it and the students will be able to explain how they add it, other additional elements outside of that model with it. Again, as we mentioned, have at least one motorized program, Lego element from the WeDo 2, and be able to add other elements outside of that. For your building model, there are a lot of great examples in the model library that will show you how to build models to move around and how to help code and get some of your building basics as you see on this screen here. If you wanna know more about how the gearing systems work, there are elements inside of the model and the instructions to do so as well. And even how to, the bevel gears work if you wanna move different elements in different ways. So, as you can see here, the rack gear, which is used in this model, is an, there's another example in this, um, in this part to show you how to uh, manipulate and maximize and even include other rack gear elements and the worm gear, which we've used in some of the previous models. Uh, if you wanna use the beam area to move a model back and forth, or even add some elements on the tires to have the model move around in different ways as well. Maybe even introduce a new kind of treadmill or a new kind of workout for your model also. And your pulley belt that comes into play here is on our model as well. And they even have a double pulley belt and even how to manipulate the belt. You can kind of see in this area where they twisted the belt to have it go in a different direction. So there are a lot of ways you can manipulate this, manipulate this model and improve it to do other exciting things. So as you can see here, this is a great example of some of the models and your desk that are set up. How your desk are set up, they have a computer or a tablet and they'll have their model behind their show me poster. Students will, the teams will line up or stand in front of their model or stand to the side of their model and you'd want to practice how this works because sometimes the students, or the, excuse me, the teams, they'll stand in front of the model and the reviewers can't really see what's going on or the students are kind of gathering in a awkward way trying to present 
and show their model as well. So have whoever is going to run the tablet or computer as a coder to run it and or, or two people and then someone pointing to the item what's going on and then someone reviewing it uh, to the to the uh, reviewers as well. So you can see there's a lot of great models here. They're set up in different ways and table covers are good to get more of your recognition of your team members out there as well. For your coding, the We Do 2 has a great area in the library for coding. If you want to know how something works, go back there. If you want to know how something works, it'll tell you how to do motor power, how to speed, how to give more power to your motor or less power to your motor, how to change direction, how to make your motor wait, how to light your hub up and such. So there's a lot of great opportunities out there for you as a coach to learn about the We Do Too and to teach the uh, teams and have them explore it. A great part about this is the app is free and any of the team members can download this app and they can do a screenshot and share it with the main team member who has a robot. If they would like to, they could download that code and see how it would work virtually, however you would do your virtual class and run this code and other team members could say, well, I like the way it moved or I want like to see it move less and let's work on the code maybe even submit different code opportunities for the uh, machine to, to run or several codes for it to run. You can run different codes at different times by using prompts. And I'll uh, see if I have enough time to sneak in to show you how to do that as well on the, on the programming part. Let's see what our next part is here. So your programming string, as we mentioned earlier, learning how to do your programming and options on programming You'd have your start block here. And ah, here's our prompt here. So you can have your start block where you click on the start block and it runs your program automatically. It would run our power of eight and a counterclockwise waiting for three and stopping here. And here we added a prompt from the keyboard. So you would hit the keyboard. If you have a tablet, it doesn't work as efficiently, but it is possible. When using a tablet, it brings up the keyboard, which covers some of the code. So the code would need to be higher up on the platform for viewing, uh, for viewing purposes. But on your computer, you can hit the A prompt and the A prompt will run this prompt or all the prompts that have the A on it. And it would do the same item again. So when you're using the A prompt, you can A prompt one we do model and then a prompt another we do model or a different motor to do different elements or different codes that others have submitted as well, which is a great way to add more team and core opportunities into it and more involvement and ownership. As we move on here, your pro program basics, excuse me, you have your outputs, inputs, your events, loops, functions, and conditions. And here, they label all of these for your output. So your output is going to show a color or color pattern or color pulse on your We Do Hub. And there's a different color variety that uh, I always like to see a little extra color and uh, personality into the robot part as well. And there's a port next to the motor plug-in. I think it's important to use it. This one's gonna use your motion sensor and you can see it down here, it has the motion sensor where something's going further away or closer to it, changing into its, uh, into its closeness or weight and distance. And using those sensors are another addition to helping in your, uh, the reviewer seeing your program uh, go a little deeper into uh, more expansive coding, not just making it go forward and backwards, but actually having it move when something comes in front of it or uh, something goes in the back of it, it will move, or your tilt sensor, which is not shown here, but you can have it change direction of the motor or make it offer different sounds. And speaking of sounds, sometimes the room is a little uh, high in um, uh, decibels, if you may, but I do like to see that the robot has different sounds in it as well. Adding a sound block and several of them are great options and having your robot wait for a few and then adding loop blocks for more efficient programs 
and even numbering those loop blocks are available as well for more extended coding on those parts. So here are the coding blocks that are available for the WeDo 2, and you can arrange these in any pattern you want to, as long as they're lined up correctly, how they fit into uh, connecting blocks and other uh, blocks as well, and how your motors connect, the speed they'll work in, whether they're waiting or turned off, even sound inputs, display inputs for background effects, and the number of um, inputs that they have going on. I did mention the tilt sensor earlier, and you can have your tilt sensor do a lot of expanded elements. So please don't stop at some of the basic coding. Please add on additional coding. I know a lot of students like to build with the Lego elements, but also give them an opportunity to build with the coding as well. I think that is equally as important for expanding their knowledge and opportunity for making their display and the set work well. I'm gonna show a few of the models in action here. And I'll play it twice for the uh, possible lag that may happen. Let's get this one going here. First one on the left, I'm gonna play this model. As you can see the top portion is spinning and the base is wide and strong. It's structured well, has a large sign on the back. They play it again so you can see that. Again, you can see the students gathering elements on the side here, which is really great. We'll show the model on the right now. And that was moving a little faster. If you look at the top, there's a programming on their, on their tablet. If you look at the top, they use some cams to make the bird's wings move. So it's really, really putting a lot of work into it. And I know some of the coaches see this, this model, the way it's set up here. <laughs> They're like, I'm not transporting that. So when you do show up, make sure you show up at a great time to get your, your space set up, your table set up, and the students understand that don't lean on the table, don't bump it, and make sure your structure is stable enough. So if it is bumped, it doesn't go crashing down the way their model and poster, the way their posters are displayed in the back are very colorful. And I've heard a lot of great mentioning on that and we'll go into poster setup more in a few as well. These are some of the additional resources that are available to you. Uh, someone mentioned going to YouTube. There's a lot of great Junior Lego League uh, from FIRST at Texas and FIRST as well, showing you how to set up your, your sets and to get your elements uh, focused and uh, kind of to the point of of working for your for your um, for your model. So I do want to share my screen again in the code area and how the we do set's going to look when you first get into it. So when you first open your WeDo set, it's going to prompt you and pretty much welcome you to the Lego education part here. And um, once you get that set up, it'll talk about how to Bluetooth your element in on your tablets and your coding. If you have a touchscreen uh, tablet, you can just slide up from the area. Some of the basic models and here are some of the basic models they show here. And you just go into your get started and you have several options. You can go into my first project, which is getting started on several projects. I'll go ahead and click into there. And this says, we wanna just do a very simple, easy glowing snail. And that goes through how much time that will take here. This is a beginner model and some curricula is inside of that also. You can just hit your go button to get into that. Or if you not want to go to a different expanded model, you can go to the cooling fan and Milo has several of the models set up. And if you wanna go into some more of the constructive areas, you can go into, if you wanna talk about pulling, speed, and you can go into some of the open projects at the bottom part, which are more advanced, but still, if it's your returning year, or if you wanna get more expanded or have an older group, you can get into some of the open projects and the computational thinking as well. So there's a lot of open space for our model. I'll go back home 
and the teacher resources are on the side. Those will get you to a link. Classroom projects are here. And those will go through. That's another way of getting to our model. Once we're on our projects, we can go into this light bulb up here, and that'll get into our model library, which we spoke of earlier. There's over it's more than a dozen of these models, and these will tell you how to use your bevel gear, how to get pulling models, and there's a lot of resources out here. So please look at these resources and utilize these resources to make a lot of cool models. Yes, that's a really, really cool recycling dump truck and cars and a lot of great models you can add on to a workout or exercising or maybe even be innovative and create your own. Coding, well, there is a lot of area for your coding as well. This will show you how to get some of your basic coding in, how to expand your coding, even how to make a, a joystick over here for your codes to make your codes move forward, backwards, up and down, however you have your model set up for that. And if you want to take a picture of your video and send it in when we do remote, which I think we'll talk about at the end, you can go into this camera section, take a picture, a video, and compile your codes together, send that in and get it all together, show you how that, and put all of that together and send it in to your coach or to your team and play it uh, as well. Compile your photo, video, and your documents, add elements into quadrants here and really get a lot of expansive parts on the net. So we have a lot of options on our model to use. I will go ahead and open up a project so you can see the programming screen. This is our play model here and you can just drag and play any of your any of your palettes here. I'll go ahead and put one up and show you that it's that simple. You would Bluetooth in in this section. Find your smart model. Hit your button. I see Mr. Michael. I will click it. It tells me I'm good. My model lights up and it says I am connected. One important thing is, again, your battery. It's gonna show up on your battery here. If you wanna rename your hub, you will click here. Or if you want to disconnect your hub, you would just go into that section there. So I'll disconnect my hub and go back over to the main screen. And I'll scroll through the bottom portion, if you can see it, of all of the coding blocks we talked about and mentioned earlier in our section. Keep going through those and that part. Also, in our home screen, you have your projects listed at the bottom portion. I do recommend naming these projects so they can fit what you're doing in your model. So when you say, I think that was the lift code, was it project two or three? And then you're not being efficient and trying several of the codes out to figure out which one it is. Just put a model name down there or a execution name. And when you execute that program, it will just work for you well. And you'll always know what it is if it's, you know, version one, two or three in that model. So other than that, I hope this was helpful for you to show you the actual coding and how that works uh, for you as a model. I will go over to uh, Jenny and Angela to see if there are any questions out or if there's any points that I may have missed. I didn't wanna to get too much deeper into it if you have some questions out there. Michael, we do have a couple questions from the audience. Our first question is um, for this year's treadmill can you tr change the treadmill to do some other concepts like rock climbing, things like that? I haven't heard about if the model can, I'll show my model here. If your model can go into changing the original model, I believe it has to stay as its original state. But again, there are options on the side here and I would love to see someone 
use one of the rack gears. So I'll crank my model and you'll see how it lifts in the back portion there. I think it'll be great to have maybe a model or something rock climbing up the side of this or build a crack, you know, area. There's a, there's a, this is not a really large plate, but it's a lot of opportunity on it. So rock climbing, maybe even you have these extra elements here, maybe skate park or swimming, uh, dog activities. There's a lot of things you can do for the, for the healthy heart part. Yeah. Apparently, I believe that you can um, do something other than the treadmill, but you do, of course, have to do the heart game where the, that works. So there are some different things that you can do, and that would be really cool to see. It some will be really cool to see. I agree. Some other things. So get creative out there, right? Yes. Uh, we have another question. And uh, somebody asked if this is for if this is for FLL teams. And this is actually, there's three divisions of FLL this year. You have FLL Discovery, uh, which is for the younger kids, pre-K, kindergarten. Uh, could go into first grade a little bit. Then we have FLL Explore. Um, which is second to fourth grade. There may be some first graders in there. And then we have FLL Challenge that's fourth through eighth grade. So this is this conference day is for FLL Explore and Explore, using the WD yeah. 2.0 is for that. Yes. Um, also, we had a question about if, this pre if your presentations will be available anywhere and we'll make those available. Um, those will be available probably in two places. One, they'll be available on the dfwtec.org website. Um, we'll get those posted on there over the weekend. Um, and then we'll probably have that as part, all these sessions are being recorded. So we'll maybe be able to have some different, the, the uh, actual PowerPoint presentations be part of that too. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Yeah, while you're looking at that, Angela, I wanted to share the extra additional element you have with your with your set. This will allow you to motorize your set. So here's your We Do Two motor. You would plug that into your motor space, and you would just need to insert that those conical gears right in and coat it, and that would mesh up and run your motor up and down. Make sure you're regulating how long your motor moves because you don't want that to overextend too high or have your motor stressing this uh, portion out. Although it is regulated by a belt, which will slide a little bit, you don't want to slide it too much because you don't want that to break. And I do recommend bringing an extra belt because without this belt, this is not moving. So bring both of those belts and your sets so you can have those elements available for you. And if you're new to the WeDo set, you would just plug your motor right into the back portion here and and that would work well for you Thanks. all right angela yeah you say you had another question out there i th i think those are all the questions that we have for you but thank you so okay. much for taking us through uh the weedy 2.0 and building and programming and we will if you didn't get to hear earlier we will get these presentation posted they will be the powerpoints will be on dfwtec.org's website. And we also are recording all these sessions and those will be available in the First in Texas YouTube channel. So um, next week, so that you'll be able to um, go back to any session and be able to watch that again. And we will provide the PowerPoint slides as well. So thank you for joining us, Michael, we appreciate it.